Freya. We have commissioned you to work with us on a project downstairs, which is all about kind of artists during this really un unusual time of lockdown. So just tell us a bit about how, how has lockdown been for you um, based in London? Oh, hi Ian, it's lovely to be here. My relationship to distance has really, really changed throughout this period that I don't, I see the same horizon line, you know, for many, many days go by and, it, and my kind of, the distance that I travel has been reduced so dramatically. So actually I'm kind of aligning myself to weather. I'm aligning myself to the sun rising and setting but from a, a kind of much more stationary, static position, whereas normally I'd kind of move around so much within a day that actually I feel like time and distance was kind of expandable in a very different way. Tell us a bit about this piece of work um, and how you came come across the idea and what the inspiration is behind it. Well, I think when we were talking about kind of negotiating now um, and what that means, it felt, you know, I, I felt like distance was the kind of first kind of way of encountering what's happening here because there's this kind of strange parallel for me that we're kind of locked down we're in one place in a way our future has kind of dissolved it's not about there's no longer this kind of anticipation for projects to come and it's anticipation of the next you know the next time i travel the next time i go on residency i mean i suppose i should say that my work is is very much focused on site and kind of my experience and response to different sites. A lot of them travelling, I guess. Yeah, exactly. So a lot of my work incorporates journeys and that idea of distancing away from the known into this kind of frontier, if you like, this kind of unknown. Um, so I guess that comes into it, but also this idea of kind of actually I'm forced into the here and now without that. I don't. We don't have that kind of horizon line of what to, of where to go. We kind of we're absolutely here, you know, placed here. But then on the other side of that. I feel like now is an absolutely unprecedented frontier. You know, we're facing this thing and, you know, so being asked to kind of represent my experience of it in some way, I felt like it needed to be about the here, but also about that kind of the there, that kind of unknown space. I started kind of really thinking about where I'm getting the there, you know, where am I getting my distance? If I'm staying in a flat that's kind of probably about a two metre, um, kind of radius which is interesting in itself kind of where's my there where do I get my distance from and really kind of the obvious I guess um, first <laughs> go to is our computer so I started looking at kind of where was the furthest place that I could contemplate you know where is the furthest man's been that I could contemplate through this through this medium of the computer and I started looking at NASA's images of asteroids that had been captured because they're the furthest spaces that we can see but also the other thing that was quite interesting about the asteroids is the particular one, Bennu, that I've been concentrating on um, is listed as a kind of, is a threat, it's, it's, it's listed as a, as a threat to our, to our world. So that was quite interesting as well, that there's this implicit threat in something that is so far away. And kind of thinking about that in connection to the virus, that seemed quite interesting. Um, and obviously that it's, it's, it's sort of, it's orbiting the earth in, in a sort of a uniquely self-distancing type. Absolutely, of absolutely. That is so, that's great. Absolutely. There is that ex exact kind of, kind of funny relationship that we have um, to that space, that it is also moving um, through time. What I've done is I've started drawing um, these images of NASA and, and, and actually what was so interesting for me to do that was that actually the, I, I wanted to, in a sense, scrutinise what those images I was seeing were. It seems like when we look at the computer, it's such a, a shallow rendering, if you like. You know, you, I, I can see you, but I know you're not solid and real and you don't smell, not that you smell, but do you know what I mean? You're not a kind of real entity. And that was what was so interesting to me, that we kind of, these illusions, if you like, of space and these illusions of place. Um, what was that? Because, and that really comes into the frame when you're drawing, because you really need it is a kind of translation of one of that information onto the page. So actually when you're drawing something that is a tiny virtual image, it, it becomes very obvious very quickly that so much of what you're drawing is actually your imagination. And I have no understanding of, of perspective on these images. I don't know if I'm looking at something very far away, incredibly huge, or if I'm looking at something very close up and tiny. Yeah, that's interesting because that because the images themselves look wholly, I mean, when you know what they are, they look wholly otherworldly. 
but actually mm. the images themselves could be a beach or a landslide or the bottom exactly. of a yeah. building site or anything. I mean, that's the, that's the kind of interesting element. Yeah, and that, that was exact, that's so good. <laughs> Thank you, because <laughs> that's exactly what I, what I wanted to kind of draw and that connection actually between this kind of other world and also the kind of mundanity that it could be the pavements that I'm seeing, it, it's actually, they, they are so similar to the urban environment that I am in right now, that when I, on the little walks, the exercise walks that I could do, the pavements, the, the kind of building sites, just the small holes that are being dug up on the side of the road, they look exactly the same. Alongside the drawings of NASA, I'm also drawing what I'm calling the pavement drawings, which really are just kind of the spaces that I am existing in right now. And they're exactly three times larger than the drawings of NASA because I kind of liked that idea that there's so much erasure inherent in a virtual image. There's so much that's not there. There's so much slippage and kind of uh, absence, if you like. Whereas the pavements, I can stay with the pavements as long as I like to draw them, you know, and I can be up close. I can, you know, I can be right up against them if I want. I'm, this is exactly me here. So that's quite an interesting thing. And actually slipping between the drawings is kind of interesting going from I've been drawing like here and then I've been drawing there I'm not trying to achieve a photographic um, rendering of this thing I, I wouldn't see what the point is it's more about being there I, I witness Bennu when I'm drawing it I, I kind of I'm I, it takes hours these drawings to do and and it feels like I journey it feels like I've traveled and I'm and it, with all the imagination I can muster I need that in order to be able to draw these spaces that in actuality I have very little information at hand to be able to do. It's kind of interesting that one is actually very much man-made and mm. resembles something that is very much more otherworldly. Yeah. But there's a serendipity to one that we don't have in the other. I knew that with the pavement drawings I wanted them flat on so it's just looking down and there isn't any escape it's just this is the moment you know in a way they they mark time in that way that they they don't have this kind of future kind of off, they don't have that distance. But the NASA drawings do because actually the images recede into darkness yeah, very yeah. quickly. But we don't know if that's miles or if that's meters, meters. which I think is yeah. interesting. This project is a collaboration between you, yourself and Jessica Holtaway. Um, yeah. Can you tell us a bit about how that's worked and what her role has been? I knew I wanted to make a series of drawings and I, and I wanted to also make a series of texts. I'm, I'm really interested in erasure poems where people basically redact words from, um, from other texts. I started looking at the articles, the news articles that were coming through every day and I started kind of redacting them just down to verbs, just down to words that were, that were, were doing, describing what was being done right now. But, and I was also quite interested to see how um, warlike the language became, that we were going into battle and you know everything kind of felt very kind of heroic. And so I immediately, I should have said that I kind of started this conversation with Jess almost immediately kind of saying I've got this commission and did she want to work with me on a series of texts that would kind of work as a back and forth. And I wanted to, in a way I would be the here and she would be the there. She would come back to me with a further landscape. So I kind of said to her, I've been working with these texts that are the news and through time. So we would have a series of texts that kind of showed how the language changed as things evolved and kind of developed. It was really interesting. She came back with some, some really wonderful frontiers again. Um, so she came back with an astronomer who, who was talking in the 1800s about first discovering an asteroid. And, and again, she'd, she'd redacted this letter down to the verbs. And we also have the first woman who walked on the foot of the ocean um, and also James Cook the explorer uh, talking to another explorer so they we have their texts kind of running alongside the texts from the news and it's very interesting to kind of again there's a bit like with the drawings there's a kind of immediate connection with language um, to the sense that actually it's, sometimes it's confusing at times it's confusing to know whether we're looking at a letter Kind of describing an asteroid or if we're looking at the telegraph describing coronavirus so we've rendered them into kind of rubber tablets that we were thinking about the kind of the material that these, these texts would um would go into we, we wanted them to be 
kind of objecty. So if the drawings are throwing you into other spaces, I wanted the texts to kind of work with you here and now as objects. And rubber seemed a kind of interesting material for the for now. It kind of it had a kind of medical kind of wipe clean um, feeling. But what was very interesting was that when they've come back, they actually look far more organic and, and old. They have this kind of residue on the surface. They almost look like chalkboards to me. It feels as if information's been rubbed off them. They're really far more beautiful materially than I had envisaged they would be. So that was a really wonderful surprise for us. This is part of our Seeds of Hope exhibition and we started it <laughs> very much because we felt that um, we wanted to offer support to artists, but also we try and make the gallery a little bit more accessible people virtually. So we called it Seeds of Hope. And we'd sent out lots of seeds to people who have been planting them, which has been great. Right. What yeah. has kept you hopeful during this time? Well, actually, I mean, <laughs> it sounds cheesy, but this project has. I mean, I think it's been so brilliant at a time when the kind of emphasis was on losing work, you know, that lots of things started stopping. To get this was wonderful, to have that kind of, open invitation to just delve in to um, into a series of drawings was a fantastic kind of, I couldn't have asked for a better beginning to my lockdown. But I think really time, time has been, time is so important to just take a moment to kind of reflect, but also re-envisage. I think, you know, I was talking a lot about kind of having our, our future, if you like, or at least our planned futures dissolve a bit in front of us, that everyone had ideas for how they would be spending the summer. And obviously those ideas are now just that, <laughs> and they may not be a reality this year, but I think it's really important to have time to actually reimagine and re-envisage and in a way find a new path. I think that's been, that's been really creative for me.